In this movie, we continue our development of using a sprite, a pixel-based image, to create an explosion cloud, or kind of a dust cloud. We'll take a look at some of the settings in greater detail right now, because the implications of using them will become very, very apparent, and then we're going to do a neat little trick. But that trick is to actually render this as a movie, and bring the movie in as something to be part of a particle emitter. Very, very cool way to uh, create multiple explosions very easily without having to uh, kill yourself with work. Let's go ahead and scrub the timeline a little bit and we'll see what's going on. As I move the timeline left to right, we see our little explosion, the particles fan out, and they disappear. Now what if you wanted to contain the explosion to a small area? Well, let's open up our settings and see what we have and what we need to change to do that. Currently, we pulled the trick off where the particles that are created at the outset exist for the rest of the animation by entering the number zero in the lifetime frames. If instead we wanted a little burst, then what we actually need to do is add the number of frames that we're going to allow the particles to live. In this case, I'm going to say let's choose something like 10 and select OK. Now when we look at our preview, we see that we've got different type of action going on. As I scrub the timeline, we see the, these clouds radiating out as they go out. Now that may be exactly what we want, but what if we want this to actually fade away while we're doing that? Oh, it looks like I crept in with a little keyframe layer, layer there. Let me delete that. Well, here's how we handle that. We can adjust the opacity of the burst particle layer itself, or we can also adjust the opacity of the explosion sprite over time. Either one is okay, but they have little different results. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and work with the sprite particle layer itself. I'm going to move down to frame 24, and at this point, I'll say that I want the opacity of this emitter to be zero. So it goes, starts out really strong on the left side, and in one second, everything disappears. So I'll open the settings again and come to the opacity layer and say zero. I want zero percent opacity. You can see through it completely invisible. Also I want to make it softer as it gets to this point. So I'll give it a value of something like two using the blur radius. Now when I select OK and we look in our timeline we see a keyframe has been added to the layer opacity and this is a little feature right here that you can get to by going to settings and enabling the different things that you want to see. I've got layer opacity selected. We could be showing blur if we wanted. You can also enter the value we just did here using the graph editor which we looked at in a preceding movie. But if I scrub the timeline, man, everything looks the same. And that's because layer opacity issues and blurring options, I should say, instead of issues, are not visible until you render. So let's do a spot render. We'll come back to frame one where this is just starting out. I'll do command R on the Mac. That's control R on the PC and we start to see the explosion. Now you'll notice that took a little bit longer to render than some of the other things we've been rendering which are almost instantaneous. Where we can do a you know 48 frame, 72 frame animation in just a couple seconds these take longer and you have to plan for that. So this is frame one. Let's go ahead and see what we're looking at when we come all the way down here to something like about frame oh, 20. When I render again, it thinks about it, and hardly anything is seen right now. That's because it's fading out. There's a very, very light colors right here that you might be able to see or not, depending on your monitor settings. I'll close this window. Now let's render this out and save it as a movie. We'll have a specific section following the special effects section on rendering, but we're kind of crossing over. As we've already learned, it's tough to talk about an animation program without doing a little bit of animation. But we'll focus on more details in the rendering section. I'll come to File, Project Settings, and I want this to only render to frame 24 from frame 0, and that's because the object becomes invisible at that point in time. So I'll say start at frame 1, end at frame 24. I'll go OK. We can see that the color has changed on the top of the scrubbing time bar here. I'll go ahead and do render and this will actually take just a second.
Did I say render? Let's go ahead and do an export animation. What we'll want to do with this, and if you're even on a PC, I would encourage you very strongly to get QuickTime if you don't have it. And one of the reasons is, is that QuickTime is designed to have some functionality for animation that the AVI Codex and the Windows Media Viewer Codex do not have if you're working with animations, and that is respect for alpha channels. So with the QuickTime Movie option selected, frame 1 through 24, We've got some other options that we'll explain in more detail later on, except for one down here that says do not pre-multiply alpha channel. This is something I'll explain in a little more detail, but this should always be selected when we do that, or when we render out an animation that has transparency like this. I'll select OK. We'll be presented with another dialog box of what, where do you want to save it? And I'll create a new folder for that here, and I'll say, well, let's save this in Smoke. I'll go OK, Smoke, there we are. We've got that little movie rendering out. And I'm going to rename this to Smoke instead of the project file name. Select Save, and it pops up yet another dialog box, but this is where we have to be very specific. Animation Codec is a great QuickTime codec that gives you lossless compression, but it doesn't respect alpha channels. The method we need to select instead is off the screen as I scroll down for you, but called PNG ping because as we already learned, it respects alpha channels. But here's the kicker. You can't choose millions of colors. You have to choose millions of colors plus because without choosing this option, that transparency information, the alpha information will not be carried over. I'll go ahead and render this and meet you back here in the next movie.